everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. All you do is copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now, as you can see, I'm in a rather spooky, mysterious place. I'm wearing a black outfit and some round glasses because today we're doing a special story based on J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Let's get started. We meet Harry, age 10, living in a house. Coming up to stand, take your feet wide, arms out and above your head. House pose. Harry lives at number four Privet Drive with his uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia and his horrid bullying cousin Dudley Dursley. Now, Harry always tries to keep as quiet as a mouse. Coming down to your knees, everybody, and tuck yourself up into a tiny little mouse pose. He stays in his tiny little bedroom, which is in fact the cupboard under the stairs. Coming up to sit. Now, on Harry's 11th birthday, the moon is in the sky. Coming up to stand, join your feet together and your hands together above your head and take yourself over to one side, making a moon pose. And over to the other way, making another moon pose or a banana. When the clock strikes midnight, pointing all the way up to 12. Dong. All of a sudden, a giant called Hagrid clomps in through the door. Jump your feet wide, folding forwards, take hold of your ankles and clomp, 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 clomp. He straightens up as he tells Harry, you are a wizard. A wizard? Turning one foot to the side, one foot back and bend your knee. Stretch your arms out wide and lift your arm up to the sky, coming into a wizard pose. I'm not a wizard, says Harry. Taking your arms down again, straighten your leg and turn to the other side, bending your knee, coming into a wizard pose on the other side. I'm just Harry. Hagrid stands up and says, no, and you've been accepted into the Hogwarts School of Wizarding and Witchcraft. <gasps> Arms wide, hands above your head, coming into school pose. Now, before Harry starts school, he needs to go shopping to get some stuff. Things like a uniform and a pencil case. Oh, and a wand. <laughs> Hagrid takes Harry on his magic flying motorcycle. Taking yourself halfway forwards, take your handlebars. Here we go. <laughs> they come to a stop at Diagon Alley, which is a secret hidden magic shopping street in the middle of London. This is where all the witches and wizards buy their things. Coming to stand at the side, Harry has to take big steps to keep up with Hagrid. Big step. Now Hagrid tells Harry that he's in, he is in fact famous amongst wizards and witches, known as the boy who lived. Step all the way back and all the way forwards on the other leg. Big step. That's because Lord Voldemort killed Harry's parents when he was a baby, but couldn't kill Harry for some strange magical reason. Step all the way back and step forward on the other leg. Big step. And Harry is in fact rather rich because his parents left him lots of money on deposit at the Gringotts Wizarding Bank, which is where they are now for Harry to withdraw some money. Coming up to stand. Gringotts Wizarding Bank is run by goblins. Squatting all the way down. These are rather little menacing looking fellows with long pointy noses and long pointy ears and long fingernails and sharp nails. Ooh. The goblins show Harry to his vault, which is a bit like a ginormous treasure chest. Sitting on your bottom, join the soles of your feet together, holding onto your toes, and take your head down towards your feet. 
they open up the vault with a golden key. <gasps> Inside is lots and lots of money, loads of gold coins, plenty for Harry to buy the things he needs for school. They also go to another vault where Hagrid takes out a stone-shaped parcel and says, Official Hogwarts business, Harry. Pay no attention to this. <clears throat> hmm, funny, Harry thinks. But now he can go buy his things, so he heads to the wand shop. Coming up onto your knees, take your foot out to the side and your hand up to the sky. Now open up the wand shop door. And come back to two knees again. Take your other leg to the other side, your hand up to the sky, and close the wand shop door. Inside, Harry gets to try all of the wands. He gets into his wand pose, taking one foot forward, one foot back. Take your arm out and swish over here and jump your feet the other way and swish over there. But the wand that suits Harry best is in fact the twin of Lord Voldemort's. It contains a feather from the same phoenix. A phoenix is a magical bird with a plume of fiery red feathers. Coming up to stand and face the side, take your arm up to the sky and your hand to the side. Now see if you can catch your foot in your hand, showing off your very special phoenix. Now let's see if we can kick our foot into our hand, coming into our dancer pose to show off our fiery red plume. Well done, everyone! And coming up to stand. Let's try that on the other side. Turning to the other side now, reach your arm to the sky, your hand to the side, and see if you can catch your foot. Now, kick, kick, kick your foot into your hand, coming into your beautiful fiery phoenix dancer pose. Yay! Well done, everyone! Coming up to stand. Now Hagrid very kindly buys Harry a present for his 11th birthday. A beautiful, pure white, snowy owl called Hedwig. Come down to your knees, take your hands down in between, and we go to it, to, and again, to it, to. Very good, everyone. It's the first day of school and Harry arrives at King's Cross Railway Station to catch the Hogwarts Express from platform nine and three quarters. Harry puts his hands on his hips and looks over one shoulder. Hmm, where could platform nine and three quarters be as he looks over the other shoulder? And the first and the second? He has no idea where platform nine and three quarters is. Then he spies through his little round glasses, joining your thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. The Weasley family, and they're obviously going to the same train as he is. He asks them to show him the way, and they tell him he has to jump through a magical wall. Crouching all the way down onto your tippy toes. After three, let's do a big jump through the magic wall. Ready? One, two, Three, whoosh! Wow, Harry made it! On the other side is the Hogwarts Express, the train. Jump your feet together, let's go! Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, here we go around the track. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, here we go around the track. On the train, Harry makes friends with Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. They soon arrive at Hogwarts. Toot! Food. All of the children are taken to the Great Hall at Hogwarts School, where the long tables are set. Sitting down on your bottom, feet flat, knees bent, hands behind you. Lift up your bottom, making yourself into a big, long table. Everyone takes a seat in a chair. Coming up to stand, lift your arms up to the sky and bend your knees, sitting down in your chair pose. Harry, Ron, Hermione and the rest of the first years need to be told which house they are in before they can eat. So they need to try on the sorting hat. Jump your feet wide, hands above your head, making a nice pointy sorting hat shape. Now, there are four houses at Hogwarts School. There's Gryffindor, 
the lion coming down to your knees. After three, lion pose. Ready? One, two, three. There's Hufflepuff, which has the symbol of a badger. Take your hands forward, tuck your toes and walk your hands back so that you're crouching and balancing like a little badger with pointy paws and a pointy nose. Hufflepuff. There's also a Slytherin, which has the symbol of a snake. Yes, well done everyone. Come down onto your bellies, hands underneath your shoulders and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Like a Slytherin snake. And lastly, there's Ravenclaw, which is the symbol of an eagle coming into eagle pose. Up we come to stand. Cross one leg over the other and bend your knees. Arms out wide. Swizzle those arms so one's under the other and wave with your underneath arm. Twizzle them round to hold your palms and sit yourself down like an eagle. Ah, ah! Now I'd like to know which house you're in. Let's play a game. I'll twinkle my fingers like this, like I'm wearing the sorting hat, and I'll say a special rhyme. And then I'd like you to show me which house you're in by doing the yoga pose. Will you be in Gryffindor with the lion? Will you be in Hufflepuff with the badger? Will you be in Slytherin with the snake? Or will you be in Ravenclaw with the eagle. Let's see. Ready, everyone? Sorting hat, sorting hat. Which house are you? <gasps> wow, I can see all sorts of houses. Some of you are in Gryffindor, lion pose, yes. Some of you are in Ravenclaw. I can see you're doing eagle, well done. Some of you are in snake. Look, you're doing snake, that means you're in Slytherin. Ooh. And some of you are in Hufflepuff with your very clever badgers. Well done, everyone. Now, coming up to stand, twinkle your fingers on your head as Harry, Ron and Hermione wait to be told what house they're in. And it is... Gryffindor! Lion pose, coming down to your knees. After three, one, two, three. Rawr! Very good, everyone. Now, at Hogwarts, they have some rather funny lessons. They have potions with Professor Severus Snape coming onto your tummies to make a cauldron. Here we go, onto your bellies. Take your feet towards your bottom. See if you can grab one ankle and another ankle, and then breathe in as you lift up into a cauldron shape. Well done, everybody. Now, coming all the way up again to sit with your feet nice and wide, because into that cauldron they have to mix lots and lots of bubbly potions. Take hold of one of your stirring sticks, and we go bubble, 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 potion. And the other way, let's take the other stick now. Bubble, 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 potion. Take your leg to the other side. In the sports field, they have broomstick flying lessons. Coming up to stand. Let's do our flying pose. Ready? Standing nice and strong, take your arms out wide. Lift up one of your legs. Oh, trying not to wobble. And take your foot out back behind you, making yourself into your flying pose. Broomstick flying. Woohoo! And standing nice and tall. Now, Harry is very good at broomstick flying, so good that he gets chosen to be the new seeker on the Quidditch team for Gryffindor. Let's try our flying pose on the other side and see what it's like playing Quidditch. Coming to the other side, arms wide, see if you can balance on your one leg and then take that leg all the way back behind you into your flying pose, nice and strong, woohoo! And stepping back, well done everyone. Now, one night, Harry, Ron and Hermione are climbing the stairs back to Gryffindor's quarters. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. When all of a sudden, the stairs change direction. Ooh. They keep climbing. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. And they end up in a part of the school they're really not supposed to be in. 
they come across a large three-headed dog. Ah! Coming down to your knees, take your hands down, tuck your toes, press your bottom up to the sky, coming into your dog pose. Now, I did say it was a three-headed dog, so let's lift up one of our legs and waggle it around. Ah! Coming up to stand, everyone. Harry, Ron and Hermione run, run. And they hide, tucking themselves up into small little hiding balls. Oh, that was one scary guard dog. They sit up. What on earth could it have been guarding, they wonder. Hmm, Harry wonders whether it had something to do with that parcel Hagrid got out of the vault back at the Gringotts Bank. We'll see. Let's go and ask Hagrid, they think, who lives in the Forbidden Forest. Coming up to stand, the Forbidden Forest is full of menacing looking trees. Bring one foot on top of the other and your hands together at your heart. Now grow your tree up nice and tall. Ooh, now, I wonder if you can do a really nice menacing scary face for me. Very good, let's try another one on the other side. Bringing your other foot on top now, your hands together at your heart again. Grow up nice and tall and another nice scary face. Very good, everyone. They find Hagrid's hut. Jump your feet wide, hands up tall. Where they find him tending to a large golden egg. Hmm. Sitting on your bottoms, hug your knees into your chest. Now, see if you can just lift your toes off of the ground and balance like a little cosmic egg. Well done. All of a sudden, the egg hatches. And out pops a baby dragon. Oh, coming up onto one knee, everyone. One knee forward, one knee back. You can keep your toes tucked behind you if it helps. And then crisscross your thumbs, lifting them up and above your head. And let's do a baby lion face, ready? <laughs> Very good, can we swap sides? Taking your knee down and swapping your sides, ready? Oh, Hagrid's fallen in love with this little baby dragon. He calls him Norbert. Oh, very sweet. Now, Harry asks about this guard dog. What was it doing? What was it guarding? Hagrid says, well, oh, that's just Fluffy. Fluffy's no trouble. He'll go to sleep if you play him music. Oh, we well, shouldn't have said that. Ah, so Hagrid knows something about this guard dog, but he's not ready to tell Harry what he's guarding. At least Harry now knows how to make him fall asleep. It's Christmas, and for the first time in Harry's life, he receives a Christmas present. It's a beautiful cloak, and the note says that it used to belong to his father. Harry tries it on. Coming up high onto your knees, take your arms wide. Now wrap yourself up in that beautiful cloak. <gasps> Harry notices that when he does this, his whole body disappears. <gasps> It's an invisibility cloak. Cool, this is a brilliant present and could be very, very useful. It's back to being at school and Harry, Ron and Hermione are in the library studying some books. Sitting on your bottom, bend your knees and open your knees, making a book shape. They're trying to find out what that stone was and maybe it's got something to do with Fluffy the guard dog. <gasps> Hermione, who's very good at studying books, finds something. The Philosopher's Stone, it contains the elixir of life. Elixir of life means that you're immortal and that you'll never die. Harry and Ron do know this, but Harry realises, yes, that must be what is being hidden at the school to protect it from Lord Voldemort, who wants it more than anything so that he can regain his health, take his power back and finish off Harry once and for all. Harry knows that he must get to it before Lord Voldemort does. And luckily, he has his friends, Ron and Hermione, to help him. That night, they take cover beneath the cloak. Standing up, jump your feet wide, arms wide. Start to spin yourself as you cover yourself with that brilliant invisibility cloak. Then the three of them start to tiptoe, tiptoe, quietly, 
so as not to make a sound while they're invisible, to that room where Fluffy the guard dog is. Coming down to your knees, hands down, tuck your toes, lift your bottom up to the sky. Remember, Fluffy's a three-headed dog, so lift up one of your legs and waggle it around. <laughs> but Harry knows music will send it to sleep. So he plays a little tune on a flute. Standing up, cross one leg over the other and take your hands to the side and play your little tune on your flute. And let's go the other way. Cross, the hand, cross your feet the other way and take your hands to the side and play your flute on the other side. Very nice. Fluffy seems to go to sleep, coming down to your knees, <sighs> all the way down with your head. <sighs> Harry, Ron and Hermione take this opportunity to open up the trapdoor in the floor that Fluffy has been guarding. Standing up, legs wide, Crisscross your fingers behind your back and stretch your arms out, folding all the way forwards to open up the trap door. Ready? One, two, three, fold! They stand up and they jump down into the trap door. Ready? One, two, three, boom, boom. They land on their backs, rolling all the way down, but they've landed in a giant plant, a plant called Devil's snare. It starts to coil itself around their legs, around their arms. Oh no, it's trapped them. Luckily, Hermione, who pays attention in her herbology classes, knows that the way to release from this plant is to relax. They try it. <sighs> sure enough, it works and they're free. Yes, coming up to stand. They're in the next room but they're faced with a life-sized game of wizarding chess, where all the pieces come to life. Jump your feet together. There's a bishop, hands at your heart, who's bowing backwards and forwards, singing oo boo bee doo boo dee There's a knight as well. Take one foot forward, one foot back, and clasp your hands forward as we go charge, like a knight. There's also a castle piece. Turning your feet to the front, take your arms out wide, hands above your head, coming into your castle pose. Now, luckily, Ron is rather good at chess, so he takes the lead in this game, and he does really well. He leaves the coast clear for Harry to continue alone. Harry goes through a tunnel. Coming down to your knees, hands down, tuck your toes, lift your bottom to the sky. He walks his feet forwards and he comes up to stand slowly to find himself facing a giant magical mirror. He stands as still as a mountain, looking at his reflection. In this mirror, you see whatever you desire. And all of a sudden, Harry sees the Philosopher's Stone drop into his pocket. It's worked. But at that very same moment, Lord Voldemort comes into the room in disguise as one of Harry's professors. He tries to grab the stone off Harry. Take one foot forward, one foot back, stretch your arms and reach forward like Lord Voldemort. Give it to me! Harry pulls all the way back. No! Voldemort chases Harry all around the room and he reaches again for it. Give it to me! Harry grabs his hand and as he does, the hand begins to burn and disintegrate into dust. Harry takes hold of Voldemort's head and all of a sudden Voldemort's head starts to disintegrate into dust until his whole body turns into one big pile of rubble. Harry's natural magic has done it again. He's defeated Lord Voldemort and he has the Philosopher's Stone in his care. 
but he is exhausted and he takes himself to the hospital wing where her lovely cozy bed is waiting for him. Sitting on your bottoms, feet flat, knees bent, hands pointing towards your bottom and lift yourself up into your bed shape. Ah, oh, Harry sinks down into the bed. He stretches his legs forwards and he falls all the way forwards to take hold of the blankets. He brings them up over his body as he gets himself lying down and comfy in this beautiful, comfortable bed. He takes rest. And just like Harry, we also take rest to regain our strength. That amazing, special magic that Harry has, we all have it. It's called love. And that love is the most powerful thing of all. It will defeat and overcome all darkness. And it lives in each of every one of us. And while we channel and share that love, the world, whether it's a magical one or not, will become a more beautiful place, full of wonder and light and warmth. So we breathe into that love now that sits in our body and our hearts. Deep breathing to let it spread all around. It makes us feel so peaceful. So with that love and with that peace, we slowly bring ourselves back, wiggling our toes and our fingers bringing our knees up to our chest and giving them a hug. We roll over onto our side and we slowly come up to sit, back to where we started, with our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming on the Harry Potter yoga adventure with me. That was great fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always begin by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look who our adventure is about today. Let's pop on our cosmonoculars, drawing our thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. <gasps> wow, look at that. It's so pretty, spinning around and around. All the colours, oh, lovely. Oh, can you see it? Oh, yes, it's an owlet, a baby owl. It's Tallulah the owlet. What's Tallulah doing? She's doing yoga. She's doing magic carpet pose. This is so exciting. We're off to see Tallulah the owlet. How cute. Now, we all know about owls, don't we? They're supposed to be wise. Well, Poor little Tallulah, I think she's been having a bit of a problem with this recently because she doesn't really know what wise means. Hmm. And maybe we could do with help on that one too. So this is going to be a very helpful adventure. So today we're going to be camping, camping out at night. So let's pack a backpack. We take our legs out long and we reach forward to our toes, bending our knees a little bit. We open the backpack, lifting our arms. Ooh. 
taking our arms out wide, we twist one way and we get ourselves a tent. We need a tent to camp in. Tent, 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 tent. Arms out wide again, we twist the other way. And we get a torch so that we can see in the dark. Here we go. Boom. Lovely. Pop it in. There we go. Arms out wide, twist the other way. Now, oh, let's get a sleeping bag so we're nice and snug tonight. Here we go. Sleeping bag, sleeping bag, sleeping bag, sleeping bag. Arms out wide, twist the other way. Let's get a little camping stove in case we need some breakfast in the morning or for some hot chocolate later. Get your camping stove and pop it in. Mm. Arms up high, bending our knees. Let's close the backpack. Mm. Done. Now, let's get ready to be little owls. Crossing our legs, we need to get our necks ready. So we look over one shoulder and over the other. Now, owls have seven more bones in their necks than we do, so they can look round a lot further than we can. Let's try it again. Over one shoulder and over the other. Now let's fluff up our feathers by rolling our shoulders around and around. Lift them up and put them down. Lift up one, lift up two, put down one, put down two. Going up, up, a down, down, up, up, a down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Very good, everyone. Now for those eyes, big owl eyes. Let's do our cosmonocular fingers. Have a look through. Gosh, your eyes are enormous. Lovely, just like owls. We make them strong by putting a finger on our chin and putting our thumb in front of us. Now keep your head still and follow your thumb as you move it with your eyes, lifting it up and down, only moving your eyes to the side and the other side. And now going all the way around. Very good. Now, we need to get our eyes ready for seeing in the dark. So we bring our hands together and we rub them really fast, making them go super duper hot. Hot, 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 hot. And when they're super hot, we place them over our eyes like cups, allowing our eyes to rest in that warm darkness. And when we lower our hands, ah, our eyes feel amazing. It's time to go. So we come up onto two knees, stretch our arms wide and give everyone at home a great big hug. Oh! We step outside and we head out into the woods, marching out into the forest where we're going to be setting up our camp tonight. It's still daylight, so Tallulah is still asleep. This gives us time to set up our tent. Here we are. Let's put it up. We put out one pole. Take your leg out to the side and two poles. Take your leg out to the other side and three poles, lifting your arm up to the sky and four poles. Now let's check that the zipper works. Let's see if it goes all the way down. Ready? Zip. Oh, it does. Now, does it go up? I wonder. Let's try. Zip. Mm. Mm. Let's go down again. Zzzz. Maybe it'll go up this time. Here we go. Oh. oh dear. Phew, that's a relief. We didn't want that zipper to be broken. Now we set up a campfire. Sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and setting up some logs. We fold forwards as the flames start to crackle, making us feel all lovely and warm. Oh, the sky's starting to change colour. So we lie down on our backs to watch. Lying down. Wow, look at the sky. It's turning from orange to lilac to purple and blue. It's dusk. It's so pretty. Look up there. We can see the moon. We stand up. We reach up to the moon and we say, hello moon. But look, 
It's just a little crescent moon. Drawing your feet together, bring your hands together and lean all the way over like a crescent moon or a banana and come back to the centre again and over the other way. Ooh. Wow! The moon is surrounded by lots of beautiful sparkly stars. Come up tall, jump your feet wide, arms wide, making a star shape. Look how sparkly your star is. It's amazing. Goodness, what's that sound? Come down to your knees, everyone, and rub your ears. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's the sound of the owls. They're waking up. It's the sound of the night. Can we be still and calm as we let the sounds of the night come alive? And up through the trees, through the branches, we can see Tallulah, the owlet. Coming up, up onto your toes, perch back. She holds her little wings to the side, looking over the edge, her little talons wiggling. She's a bit wobbly up there, but look, she looks down at us and she spots us. Uh-oh, she decides to dive down. Lifting your bottom up to the sky, she's falling. She might crash in a moment. But she takes her wings, crossing her elbows, protecting her little beak. She huddles down into a little ball, huddle yourself up, and then lands with a bump on her tail feathers, rocking and rolling backwards and forwards. Rock and roll! Oh dear, she's got lots of leaves in her beak, so she does a big <laughs> to get it clear. Oh dear, I'm all in a flack and a fidget because I've got to do my wisdom test at school, at owl school, and I'm not really sure what wisdom means. Oh dear, Tallulah. Well, being in a flack and a fidget can't be helping. Maybe we can help you calm down and feel centred by doing some special owl breaths. Coming to our knees, we show Tallulah how to do it. Bring your hands down in between your knees. Breathe in and lift up your wings. Breathe out and lower them down. And again. Oh, that's better. Now Tallulah feels so much calmer. She feels ready for anything. We can help her learn how to be wise. So we set off and head to the magic wishing tree. Standing up, bring one foot on top of the other and your hands together at your heart. Now grow your wishing tree branches tall. Now, because we're at the wishing tree, I think we can make a wish. Can you whisper your wish to me now? Go on. Oh, I love your wish, it's brilliant. Let's swap sides. Bringing your hands down, take your foot and put it on the other foot now. Hands together at your heart, grow your wishing tree branches tall. And this time, let's make a little special wish just for Tallulah. We wish that she finds her way to wisdom. Yes. Now it's time to go. On with our journey. <gasps> Jump your feet wide. We come to a ginormous spider's web. <gasps> Ooh, and sat in the middle is a rather large spider. Bring your feet in a little bit closer. Bend your knees, wiggle your fingers. Take them inside your feet and then take them round the back and round the sides to sit down. Psst. Psst. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to talk to you. The spider wants to talk to us. We'd better go and listen. I was hearing that you might need to learn how to be wise. Is that true? Well, I had a student just like you once, name of Peter Parker. Yes, that's right. Became the superhero Spider-Man. Well, I taught him everything he knows. I taught him how to activate his spider senses. Would you like to know? We sit down on our bottoms and cross our legs. Would we like to know how to activate our spider senses? Yes, we would. We sit, our eyes are wide. We are ready to learn and so is Tallulah. The spider brings the tips of its feet together, sitting poised. When you hear the sound of the gong, 
you will hear it chime and hear it ring. When you can no longer hear the ring, you must lower your hands into your lap. Are you ready to take the test and hear the gong? We're ready. We place our hands out to the side in preparation for hearing the gong. Wow, that was cool. We couldn't hear it anymore and so we lowered our hands into our laps. Should we try it again? Let's try it one more time and try it this time with our eyes closed. We take our hands out to the side, close our eyes and wait for the sound of the gong. When we can't hear any more of the gong's chime, we lower our hands into our laps. Here we go. was amazing. We did some really good activated listening then. The spider tells us. Now you see, that is the spider's lesson. Remember, the less you speak, the more you'll hear. That is my lesson to you, O Tallulah, and to you too, Cosmic Kids. This is a really good lesson. And now that we've activated our hearing, we can hear the sound of a monkey jumping. Coming up onto our toes after three, big monkey jump. One, two, three. <laughs> this is our monkey friend, Mike, the cosmic space monkey. All right there. Now I've got a little bit of advice. Can you look? I mean, really, really look and see what's going on in the world around you. Even better, can you imagine the world from someone else's point of view? Let's try it now. Look, over there, rustling in the leaves. What do you see? Sure enough, we see what Mike's pointing to. A tiny little mouse who's rustling around in the leaves. Now, can we imagine what this little mouse is thinking? Oh, I'm just looking for some berries and some nuts and some seeds. Oh, oh look, I found some. Oh, this is great. Oh, I can feed my babies tonight. This is wonderful. Sitting up, Tallulah spots a beetle rolling around on his back. Lying on your backs, holding onto your legs and have a little roll. Ooh. He looks like he's having a really good scratch on his back. Oh, we imagine what he must be thinking. Oh, yeah, that's the ticket. That's the spot. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, I like giving it a good... Yep, yeah. oh, great. Wow. We look back at Mike, our friend, sitting up. He is squatting still. So, you see, my friend, if you can see stuff and feel stuff from someone else's point of view, that is called compassion. And that, my friend, is a quality of the wise. And with that nugget of wisdom, he leaps off into the night. One, two, three. <laughs> this is great. We're learning so much about wisdom. What was that noise? Standing tall. It's the school bell for Owl School. It's time for Tallulah's wisdom test. Oh, let's hope she's ready. There's just enough time to phone a friend. Sitting on your bottoms, legs out long. Take hold of your telephone. Dial the number. Hello? <gasps> on the other end of the phone is our friend, Popcorn the Dolphin. Coming up onto your knees, crisscross your fingers, come down onto your elbows. <coughs> Our Tallulah is on the phone to Popcorn the Dolphin, taking hold of your other phone now, holding it to your ear. So, what do you say, Popcorn? What should I try and do? Oh, I need to stay calm, mm, keep breathing, OK? And, oh, think positive. Yeah, I can do that. I can remember it. Yeah, OK. OK, bye, Popcorn. Bye. She puts down the phone. Tallulah feels ready. She's as ready as she'll ever be. And there above her is Boobo Boobo, the eagle owl, standing up. Take one leg across the other. 
and bend your knee, arms out wide and scissor them. Wave with your underneath arm and swizzle it round sitting down like an eagle. Boobo Boobo looks down at all of the owlets below her. She is poised and balanced. Swapping your legs round now, cross the other leg over and bend your knees. Scissor your arms, wave with your underneath arm and twizzle them round. Your wisdom test will now begin. All of a sudden, a snake slithers amongst the owlets. Coming down onto your bellies, hands underneath your shoulders, wiggle your shoulders. All of the little baby owlets start twit twooing and fretting, coming to your knees. Twit -twoo, twit -twoo, twit -twoo. They're getting panicked, and by them getting panicked, it's making the snake panic more too. Coming back down to your belly. <laughs> Tallulah uses her new skills. She listens. She watches and she thinks, what is the snake thinking? And she stops. She becomes as calm as she can. She breathes slowly. As she does this, all of the other owlets see and think, oh, she looks quite powerful and strong. Maybe we should try that. And they all become still. They all become calm. And because of this, the snake becomes calm, coming down onto your bellies. And smilingly, the snake slithers away. Boobo Boobo glides down to see Tallulah, arms wide, fold forward. Silently, she lands in front of Tallulah, the owlet. She wraps her up in her ginormous eagle owl wings and says, thanks to you, Tallulah, all of the owlets have passed their wisdom test. You paid attention, that is all. Your journey to becoming wise has begun. All of the owlets are delighted and twit to woo in celebration. Twit to woo, twit to woo, twit to woo. But we, we can't stop yawning. We've got to leave these little night owls to their celebration and to their night school. So we crawl into our tent, coming onto all fours. We crawl inside and get ourselves nice and comfy. We lie down on our backs, resting ourselves all the way back, preparing for some lovely rest. We start by doing a special relaxation game with ourselves, where we make our whole body go really, really, really stiff, and then we let it go. We make our body go really, 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 really stiff, scrunching our nose and our face, and let it go. And then we melt. We breathe slowly and we let all of that action just wash away. Now, can we be brave? Be brave enough to be still. I think we can be brave enough to be still. What will we hear when we are still? How can we activate our spider senses and listen? When we listen, we take in so much. And when we breathe, we give ourselves space. We breathe now, enjoying this stillness soaking up the wisdom we've learnt. And then it's time for us to awake again, slowly wiggling our fingers and our toes, drawing our knees up 
and into our chest to give them a hug. We roll over onto our side and we slowly come up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. All of that wisdom, that thinking and feeling from someone else's point of view, we can do that. And after three, we say our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. That was wonderful. I hope you learned a little bit about wisdom. I did. It was great having you along. I hope to see you soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always begin in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look through the cosmonoculars and find out who we're meeting today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Ooh, look at the colours spinning around and the patterns. Ooh, ooh, can you see that? Oh my goodness, it's... It's Ruby Broom! What's Ruby doing? She's doing yoga. Ruby's doing crow pose. Cool. Wow, this is exciting. Today we have a special Halloween story. Ruby Broom is a little girl with a difference. She and her family are in fact witches and wizards. <laughs> so Halloween is a rather special time for them. Now Ruby is nine years old and she lives with her mum, her dad, her pet dog Pickles in a lovely house. Coming up to stand in house pose. Taking your feet wide, your arms wide and bring them up above your head. Now Ruby's pet dog Pickles is a magic dog. Let's come into dog pose. Down onto your hands and your knees. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up to the sky. And let's woof like a dog. Woof, 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 woof. Now lift up one of your legs and give it a wag like you're wagging your tail. When Pickles does this, lots of treats fall out of the sky. Woof, 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 woof. And lowering your leg back down and lift your other leg up and wag it the other way. When he wags it the other way, lots of balls fall from the sky. Woof, 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 woof and lowering your leg all the way down and coming down to your knees. Now Ruby's mum loves whizzing around on her broomstick. Let's come into broomstick pose. Lying on our tummies everyone, taking your arms down by your sides. And after three, let's lift up our legs, our arms and our chest. Ready? One, two, three, whoosh! Like a broomstick, woohoo! Coming up to sit with your legs crossed. Now Ruby's mum is very good at keeping the house absolutely spotlessly clean and she never lifts a finger. All she does is mutter a spell. She twitches her nose and she does a big blow all over the house. <gasps> and the whole place is spick and span. Hm. Now Ruby's dad, being a wizard, loves spinning around in his cape. Coming up to stand, everyone, taking your feet wide and your arms wide. Now begin to spin. He loves doing this, and when he closes his eyes and he spins, the lawn magically cuts itself. Cool! And bringing yourself to stop. 
Now, Ruby has also been practicing her magic. Recently, she's been turning everyday objects into animals, like the lamp, for example, coming into lamp pose, bringing your feet together and turning your toes out. Now, take your arms wide and bring your fingers up above your head to touch, like you've got a lampshade for a head. Yes, she managed to turn the lamp into a frog. Let's come into frog pose, bending your knees all the way down and using your fingers for balance. Let's do a one, two, three ribbit jump in the air. Ready? One, two, three, ribbit! Wow, well done everyone. The only problem is the frog still had a lampshade for a head. Take your hands out to the side and bring your fingers up above your head. She still needed to practice. Hmm. She'd also managed to turn her pencils into snakes. Let's come into snake pose. Coming to lie on your tummies, everyone, and take your hands underneath your shoulders. Now wiggle, wiggle, wiggle yourself all the way up into snake pose with a The only problem was the snakes still had pencil lead heads, so they made a right mess scribbling all over the walls, hmm. sitting back on your heels. Now everyone was getting rather excited because it was coming up to Halloween. Everyone apart from Ruby, who was having a really hard time at school. All of her friends wanted to go trick-or-treating and dress up as really horrible warty witches. Coming up to stand, everyone, and let's do our warty witch pose. Oh, maybe standing on one toe and making your mouth go all gummy and your fingers all craggy and maybe closing your eye and sticking out your tongue. Wee! Standing with her hands on her hips, Ruby didn't think this was at all fair. Not all witches are horrible like that. Some are rather beautiful, like my mum. She looks as graceful as a dancer when she rides on her broomstick. And she showed them with a dancer pose. Reaching your arm all the way up and taking your hand to the side. Now seeing if you can balance on one leg. Oh, try not to wobble. And hold your foot. Now kick, kick, kick your foot into your hand. Lifting it up above your head. Yes, seeing if you can come into your dancer pose. Fantastic. And lowering yourself back down. Well done, everyone. Ruby's friends thought this was the funniest thing they'd heard all year and they rolled around on their backs like happy babies. Coming to lie on your back, everyone, and bring your knees into your armpits and hold on to your feet. And now let's laugh like a happy baby. <laughs> oh, Ruby. Ruby thinks she's a real witch. Well, she's just as horrible and ugly as a real witch. <gasps> Coming up to sit, everyone. Ruby was really rather upset by this and later on that evening she got onto her bed in her bedroom and she hugged her knees, feeling really sad. She cried to her mum, I wish I wasn't a witch, it's not fair, nobody likes witches. Now Ruby's mum tried to explain that actually being a witch is pretty cool and then she turned herself into a lovely nuzzly black cat. Coming into your cat pose, everyone. Onto your hands and your knees. Now, arcing your spine, looking into your tummy. Yes, and then dipping your belly down and wiggle waggling your tail to go meow. She sat back on her heels, opened her arms wide and she gave her daughter Ruby the biggest cuddle ever. Wrapping your arms around, oh, it'll be okay. And lowering your hands to your lap, finally. It was Halloween night and everyone was very excited. The Broom family had the best decorations in the whole neighbourhood. They even had a whole group of skeletons dancing a jig on the front lawn. Oh, what's happening? The skeletons are here. Come on, everyone. Let's be skeletons dancing a jig. Let's stand up and dance. Here we go. Crazy! Well done, everyone. 
There was also a giant spider sat on the lawn. Let's come into spider pose. Taking your legs nice and wide, bend your knees and bring your hands down in between your feet. Now ticka 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 your fingers round the back and to the outsides of your feet, shuffling in your legs, making yourself into your spider pose. Now this spider was playing its leg like a cello. Sitting on your bottoms everyone and bring one of your feet in. Take hold of the other foot and stretch it up as straight as it'll go. Now use your other arm for a bow and play your spider cello. Now, the kids from Ruby's school thought that the broom family decorations were incredibly real, especially as they approached the front door and it opened by itself. Let's come into door pose. Up onto two knees, everyone, and take your leg to the side. Reach your arm up high and let's creak like a haunted door. They'd come to collect Ruby to go trick or treating down the street. But Ruby was up in her bedroom reading a book, sitting on your bottoms, joining the soles of your feet together and take your knees out to the side, flapping them like the pages of the book. She was also listening to music with her earbuds in her ears. A song all about the summer because she wanted to pretend it wasn't Halloween. Summertime, I love the summer, yeah. Sun and summer, ooh, 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 ooh. But Ruby's mum really thought that Ruby ought to go trick-or-treating with her friends. She was a real witch after all. So with a twitch of her nose, Ruby was standing like a mountain by the door. Coming up to stand, everyone, in your mountain pose. Nice and strong, arms down by your side. Ruby was even holding one of those mini cauldrons to collect her treats with. Hmm. Now, before she left, Ruby's mum folded halfway forwards to whisper something into Ruby's ear. And then she stood up. Hmm, we wonder what on earth she could have said. Everything was going amazingly and they were collecting lots of treats in their little mini cauldrons. Coming into your cauldron pose, lying on your tummies everyone and bring your feet towards your bottom. Reach around to grab your ankles and breathe in to lift yourself up. Ready? Kicking your feet into your hands. Yes, well done everyone. Now, then they got to Mr Snell's house, number five, and everything went downhill from there. Let's come into our house pose. Coming up to stand with your feet wide and your arms wide and your hands above your head. Now, Mr Snell really didn't like children. He liked to poke them with his walking stick if they came too close. Turning your foot to the side and your arms out wide. Lean over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke. Then coming back up to stand, bring your toes forward and turn your other toes out to the other side. Lean out over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke. Coming all the way up to stand, bringing your toes to the front. Now grab opposite elbows, because when they came a calling, saying trick or treat, Mr Snell opened the mini window in his door, lifting up your arms above your head and showing me your best Mr Snell grumpy face. Ready? What do you want? Trick or treat? <laughs> I'll take the trick. You kids don't deserve any treats. You don't scare me. You're just a bunch of silly kids. Lowering your arms all the way down, everyone. The friends didn't know what to do and looked from side to side at each other. Who was going to do the trick? But Ruby knew what to do and she stepped forwards. She looked at Mr Snell. And she remembered the words her mother had said to her earlier. An old broom family spell. She muttered the words now. And she took a big deep breath in through her nose. And she blew Mr Snell a kiss. Ruby's friends were amazed. Because Mr Snell 
wasn't Mr. Snell anymore. Slowly lowering yourself all the way down, everyone. Mr. Snell had turned into a tiny little brown fluffy hamster. Coming into hamster pose. Onto your knees, everyone, and tuck yourself up into a little fluffy hamster ball. Squeak, 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 squeak. Sitting all the way up. Now Ruby went into a little squat position to talk to Mr. Snell, the hamster. Taking your feet wide and bending your knees deep and snuggling your arms in, bringing your hands to touch at your heart. Yes. Yes, Mr. Snell, how do you feel about your trick? Are you happy being a hamster? Mr. Snell begged Ruby. He said, sorry, 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 please turn him back into a man. And Ruby took pity. So she said her spell again. She took a big deep breath in through her nose. And she blew Mr. Snell, the hamster, a kiss. Slowly rising, Mr. Snell grew back up from a hamster to being a man. And up on his tiptoes, he scuttled into the kitchen to grab arms full of treats. Then he folded halfway forwards and he gave them out to all the children saying, Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Ruby stood up. Now Ruby's friends had a newfound respect for Ruby and for witches. Perhaps they won't be so quick to laugh at someone for being different to them. Ruby felt proud for being just as she was, one of a kind, a witch, Ruby Broom. And that was the best feeling in the world. Oh, after all that trick or treating though, we have a little lie down. Let's have a lie down now on our backs with our legs out long and our arms down by our sides. Wow, what a great fun story. Trick or treating with a real life witch. Now Ruby was having a hard time because she was worried about what her friends thought about her. She wanted to be like them, to fit in and not be different. When actually her differences were what makes her special. Just like all of us. Each and every one of us is different and wonderful for those differences. We should celebrate our differences. And we should be accepting of others when they're different to us. The world will be a much richer, more wonderful place for that. So breathe into exactly who you are. Love yourself for being one of a kind, for being unique, for being you. And love others for being different, for being them. Slowly we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We bring our knees into our chest and we roll over onto our side, opening our eyes, pressing ourselves up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and that was so much fun trick-or-treating with you. I'll see you again soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye.